Brandon, it's been sitting here for three days. I say you're telling a bald-faced lie. You know they took my truck, my 79 Jeep wagon near fine as it was, and white it from Seabirds. May the next car you tow, may the wrecker and the car fall on you. May the hooks hit you in the damn head and may the car crush you. Because that's what y'all whiteys do at night. You ride through black neighborhoods and you find poor people that have been blessed with nice things and you steal them. The cars is one of them. I'm not the first one in the city whose car has been stolen by a cracker. I called this nigga John Cohane again. You know what he said to me? <coughs> Excuse me. He said, Teddy, he wants your truck. I said, well, why can't the poor white piece of trash pay for it, offer to pay for it like anybody else? He laughed. He said he ain't going that route. Do you know this white it took my truck? It took me a week to get my shit back. My transmission wasn't right when I got it back because they took the transmission linkage piece apart to tow it. And then they had the nerve to send me a letter from DMV telling me that there was a lien on my car. No, no, no. I paid that car out. I didn't owe nothing on it. So when I contact DMV, they gon' I'm gonna put all this on Facebook and stuff so y'all can see it. I don't have to lie about a damn thing. I'm tired of these niggas messing with me. You gonna play with me until my father gonna take you out. He gonna take all of your family members out. He's gonna wipe you out and take your money. Everything that you crackers hold dear that you have stolen from my people, your ass is gonna pay. Now, creeping peep up there the night when I'm there. It gonna be accidental. Because I live alone. I got a big dog. You creeping and peeping up on my porch with flashlights? What the hell you looking for? You made me move the logs so the drug dealers, uh, so the niggas can sit um, beside my house and have sex when I come home. The live condoms down there where they've been screwing. Then when I come home, the damn live syringes where they've been shooting up. But let me tell you about this nigga, George Mason. George Mason, the first time I met that sucker, he came to my house and he was upset. And I had never seen this nigga before a day in my life. But he was going over there to stay at Miss Carolyn Baptiste's house was a neighbor of mine. He asked me, could he use my phone? I didn't know this nigga from a can of paint. I let this nigga up in my house to use my phone because we didn't have cell phones then. They had went in that lady's house and wrecked her house. She had one of the finest houses. Miss Baptiste was a nurse, a real nurse, not a nurse aide, not a nurse's assistant, a real certified nurse. And she had money and her house looked like that. She had one of the finest houses on the block. This nigga, George, and I'm going to tell you how I found out his name. The girl, Tootie, died in Miss Baptiste's house last year. But before she died, I asked her, I said, I need to find out that nigga's name. Because on the websites, I got the pictures of the dog that he abused. The dog constantly had um, puppies over and over. He abused the dog and everything. All that's online. But guess what the police did for me? They came to my house, issued me a little summons like telling me it was my dog that was running the street when I had a brindle, if you know what that is, multicolored, black, brown, and white. But his dog was cold black and is right on the internet. Do you know they never locked that nigga about that dog? They never locked that nigga up about abusing that dog? And he got away with it. They come to me and want to accuse me. So you know what I told the animal control officer when I kept trying to reach them and they wouldn't answer the phone? I told them, I say, the next dogs you all come in contact with, I hope they maul the hell out of you. You're dirty. I'm tired of you picking on me. George Mason, 
lived in that house with Mrs. Baptiste. He had more drugs going on than CVS and Walmart combined. This is a dangerous black ass. He looked like a damn string bean. He claimed he used to be a boxer. That nigga had, two, they told me he had prostitution, drugs, everything going on in that house. And can you believe it or not, when I asked for that nigga name, I've been trying to get that nigga name, because you know what he told me on the corner over there at the other dope boy house? We gonna break in your house. You know what I told that nigga? I was taking pictures in the alley, how bad the alley look on that side of the street. He say, bitch, bring your ass out that alley, taking pictures. I say, nigga, who you calling bitch? You talking to your mama? He said, I'm gonna break in your house. I say, try it. I'm telling on George Macy, walking around the street in the ranks of the homeless, the girl Tootie died in the house. The EMTs worked on that girl for over an hour trying to bring her back. She said George was giving her all that dope and dope and more dope, and it killed her. Then a friend of mine named Ben. Ben used to use. Ben had just came out of Rubicon. And I told Ben, I said, Ben, you look really good. Your skin clear, your eyes clear. I said, you know God can still use you. And I like Ben. We even went to lunch. When I got off the bus one day, they, my fellas told me to say, Teddy, Ben is dead. I said, what? He done OD'd on Carolyn Baptiste's back porch, the same house that Tootie died in from the drugs. And then guess what? Because he used to go next door at the duplex next door. Man, they killed my boy T. T. Lester. Them niggas sold him the drugs. They was out there every day with him. The police let that nigga get away with the murders. The nigga was checked in when Miss Baptiste lost the house. She was so sick that she was moved out of the house and put into a nursing home. And that really messed them up. So this nigga was going around stealing storm doors. This nigga was stealing wrought iron storm doors off all the vacant houses. This nigga had broken almost every senior house in Highland Park. And I called the police and you know what I get? And I see the niggas with this shit coming out the houses off the porches. The police did not respond. You don't have to respond to me, but you can kiss my where the sun don't shine. Because one day, y'all gonna need some help. Like the young brother crashed and burned the other day. Stay trooper. You know why God let him crash and burn and kill himself? So that you crackers would not get him and turn him against his people. So you crackers wouldn't brainwash him. Anybody with children of color, young people, do not join the police forces because their ass is going down. It's too many dirty police in this city. It's too many dirty everything. And I'm here to tell you, I'm not taking no more shit. Come up on my porch when I'm at home. Y'all need to see people nine to five like everybody else. You creeping and you're peeping and you're gonna get just what the hell you're looking for, him. Two, you got shot at last night in Southside messing with the brothers. Tell me you thought he was they were robbing somebody. Everybody's business ain't y'all business. If they ain't doing drugs, they ain't breaking the law, it ain't none of your business. Just like the brother was standing outside the hotel, a white and paranoid, went and jumped on the brother and, and handled him like that. I don't feel sorry for you crackers. And for you that coming on my Facebook page, I'm going to pray that the fire in Hollywood stop. Know what I told the white girl? Stop it for what? That fire in Hollywood is the same fire you crackers and Jews use when you burn down their black churches. That fire is the same fire that you use when you burn them damn crosses in people's yard. That fire is the same fire when you hung brothers and burned them up hanging in the trees. That fire is meant for you. His people will be spared, but I say my heavenly father, turn up the heat on them. All the illegal realtors, your thieves, your cheats, 
You're going to burn up. Your stuff going to burn up. And I want my hackers to go in and hack you realtors. Let me tell you about these dirty ass realtors. This boy, John Monet, that I had never met before a day in my life. I got plenty conversation tape. That nigga ain't even know I was taping a conversation. And I was telling him how I had my real estate license and them crackers up there on Patterson and Pearl. That's my last name. I was the first black in that office ever. And there probably has never been another black in that office. You're scared. You knew I was great. My first client was Alex Gazarian, the registrar of VCU, and I qualified him for a $250,000 home, my first real client. And y'all, y'all fucked that up for me. You went in my office, tore my office up, destroyed all my paperwork. But all that money, fellas, I'm letting y'all know they easy targets. Them niggas carry plenty of money, and they are thieves. See, they control all the land and houses in the state of Virginia and all over the world. You got to have somewhere to live. And these crackers control it all. The Jews control it all. I'm going to give you an example. Have you ever seen a, a, a black man on a pawn shop? But all y'all run to the pawn shop and carry y'all valuables and deal with them damn Jews. You ain't never seen a black man on a pawn shop. It's certain things that they are not going to let black people do. So that means we have to ask our father to eliminate them. Do not be afraid when you go to church and your pastor say, all right, we got pastor's anniversary coming up and wife anniversary and all of this. These greedy bastards going to pay too because he's told us, Many will come in my name. All these jack leg preachers, grandma, you don't have to give these niggas your oil money no more. I'm setting you free. You go to church and you give what you can afford to give. Screw the rest. They tell you, well, we having a special service and you got to have a yellow this and a blue that. Screw them. Let them buy. It. And I'm going to tell you this. These pastors with all these fine cars, if it was raining, do you think them niggas would give you a ride if they saw you walking? Now, you a church member. Do you think these low lines would pull over to give you a ride? No, them niggas ride past you and blow the horn like they do at me every day. So I'm saying to you, people out there, you that know me, the people that I've given rides to, Nigga, don't blow at me and keep going. If you can't stop and say, Miss Perm, would you like a ride? Nigga, keep going. Don't blow the horn because I'm asking my God to allow you to crash and burn. I got more trash out there in the city of Richmond driving the finest cars living in public housing. The chick sure and smooth behind me, that demon, may God kill her and wipe everything out. Social services should have investigated. She adopted all these kids. She's a drug addict. She been in jail. She been locked up several times. She a felon. How in the hell she get to adopt children? And then this bitch had five cars in her name, living in public housing, living in a section eight house. You gonna get yours too, cause it started with you and Felicia Jordan. Trust and believe. You going to get it. It ain't over. It ain't over. My father ain't through with you. What you have done to me. Pull up beside my house and tell me to suck your bloody A. All of that coming back on you because you didn't know me. Going to tell me my mama died in the house. Well, bitch, my mama died at community hospital where they forgot to give her a damn blood thinner. Okay. Let's get that straight. Whoever told you that bald face lie? And I know you're working for Ellen Robinson. You came right off the street with Ellen Robinson. And by the way, somebody else been killed on Ellen Robinson Street, a white boy. And another white boy was killed on Deal Road going across the railroad track. So what's going on with that? Y'all going to find somebody black to pin them white murders on? Why are you sending all poor white trash in the Howland Park? 
Ain't it bad enough with the black folk over there that you done depressed and, and beat down and sent to the jail and stole all his self-esteem? What about the brother in the jail that 